Thank you, Sharon, for that very kind introduction. Uh, before, I, before I start, I have to commend Sharon and Chip Hughes. I know he's here. Um, the relationship with NIEHS and the Labor's International couldn't be better. Uh, we've trained hundreds of thousands of workers, as Sharon talked about, um, in hazardous waste remediation and uh, other types of remediation, and it would not have been possible uh, without the funding that we've gotten from NIEHS. So thank you for the job that you do, and thank you for that introduction. I also want to recognize Margie Alt for the great work that she does with Environment America. Uh, Dave for all that he does uh, with the Blue Green Alliance. I had, you know, I got corrected this morning because I am Irish through and through, so I always want to say Green Blue Alliance, but I got, I got it right. Um, and, and, and my friend, I know Leo had to leave, but I'll tell you what, you were treated today um, and had the honor to have two of the greatest labor leaders. Uh, not only in North America, but in, not only in this country, but throughout the world. Uh, Rich Tremka and Leo Girard are two of the finest. They are good men, good friends, great trade unionists, um, and I'll tell you what, decent human beings that are true warriors for working men in, in, in this country. So, Rich, thanks for all that you do, and Leo Girard as well. You know, it really is an, an honor to be here today at the uh, at this conference, green jobs, good jobs, uh, with all the dedicated trade unionists that are here, uh, you know, from SEIU, from steel workers. I know we have communication workers and representatives from the Sierra Club, from government, National Resources, Defense Council. And in particular, I'm pretty damn proud um, of all my brothers and sisters from uh, the Labor's International that are here today. So thank you for being here. The laborers are proud to join you today as an active, progressive, aggressive, and militant member of the Blue-Green Alliance. Because we're new to the Blue-Green Alliance, it's only fair that we introduce ourselves so that you know what you're getting into, and so you know who we are, what we do, what we stand for, and what we fight for. We are a half million men and women strong, as Sharon talked about, who build America day in and day out. We build highways and transit systems, wind farms and sewer systems. We remove hazardous waste, asbestos and lead to make buildings safe where our children live and where you work. We fight for retirement security and, and, and like you, sorry, and like you, we are genuinely concerned about our environment and deeply committed to creating good jobs. Our members fight every day for better pay to support their families. They fight for health care. Our members fight for more jobs so they and millions of workers like them can share the wealth of our nation. We fight for retirement security so there is dignity after decades of construction work that wears away at the human body. We fight for respect. And let me tell you one other thing. We fought like hell, like all of you in this room, to, eight, to end eight years of worker repression in this country by electing Barack Obama as the 44th President of the United States of America. And I can tell you what, in the trade union movement, there was no bigger party, no bigger celebration on election night than that of the American trade uh, labor movement and our efforts and your efforts to make sure that working people took this country back in this last election. Today, our country, brothers and sisters, is standing at one of the most significant moments in our history, a time of crisis and a time of opportunity. For environmentalists and for trade unionists, there is hope like never before in our lifetimes. As we move forward together, our unity will never be shattered as long as we remember two things. One, it, does not, it is not good to care for the earth if we also don't care for the people on it. And two, if it doesn't put green in working people's pockets, it's not a green collar job. If it doesn't enlarge and strengthen the middle class, it's not a green collar job. For too long, we have allowed some corporations in this country to hold the gun to our heads and demand that we choose jobs or choose the earth. It's a false choice, and today we have the power to push that gun aside, 
The time of the blue-green alliance is now. We also won't be trapped into other false choices. We don't have to choose between highways or rail because we need both. We won't draw false lines between fix it or build it because we have to do both. Today across America, the backbone of our country is in decay and is costing us lives, making us less competitive, and destroying our environment. Our wastewater systems contain so many cracks and leaks that billions of gallons of sewage seep into waterways every year. Our highways are so traffic clogged that the typical motorist wasted nearly $1,000 last year in gas and emitted millions of pounds of carbon into the atmosphere. Meanwhile, our transit systems are stretched beyond limits, with usage increasing 25% since the 1990s, while investment falls short by half. We share a dream to build America so America works again, through an economy in which every worker who builds green can afford a hybrid car, and every worker who, who is struggling to keep their house warm can join the struggle against global warming. We, as Rich talked about, are making progress. Members of our union have developed a, a cooperative and profitable relationship with one of the most successful real estate de developers in the Northwest, Gerding Edwin Development Company. They build green, they pay union wages, and brothers and sisters, they make a profit. <laughs> Yesterday, you heard a press conference that we had about Gamesa Corporation and their positive relationship with the proud, strong, and united brothers and sisters of the United Steelworkers. But, des but des despite progress, other workers building components for non-union solar and wind power corporations do not earn enough to support their families, even though their employers receive millions of dollars in taxpayer subsidies.